The debt crisis was always something that we were told was coming down the road. Is this the moment? You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. I think it's important people focus on the debt. People always ask, why? Nothing ever happens. But if you look at what happened during the Euro sovereign debt crisis, or what, as I call in my second book, the Euro viral contagion, people would have a better understanding. So first things first. We got to talk about risky debt. There's a difference between putting 20% down on your home and diligently paying off your mortgage than, you know, these junk bonds and so on. Big, big difference. Number two, we're going to talk about the stock market. And number three, Japan. All of this and more. Let's go. I got to show you this article here and the next one to really get into what I need to discuss. As stock prices peak, markets begin to fear looming threats. These type of articles come out all the time, as I'm sure you know, it's from the AP. But I wanted to touch on just a couple quick points before we move on, because it's going to set it up. With the US economy humming, corporate profits flowing, and stock prices peaking, investors on Wall Street are beginning to pose the anxious question, is it all downhill from here? Financial markets always trying to set prices now, where the economy and the corporate profits are likely to be in the future, and even readings across the economy are still at eye-popping levels. Investors see some areas of concern. What is it? What could it be? The point which I want to note from this is that we have pulled so much of the future into the present as it relates to stock prices that it is entirely nonsensical. You have to understand the way that the stock market prices it is that it's pulling into the present knowing that there's going to be this growth later. But in many, many different ways, we have seen that this has gone to territories. It is truly you know, there's there's no way to really define what has happened in a historic sense. That doesn't mean that certain stocks can't be valued more than others, or that you know you see the dominance of let's say tech industry. No, no, it's totally separate from that. The mystifying bond market behavior could last all summer. So you can see what's going on with the bond market, and people are starting to ask the question, you know, what's really going on? You've got the stock market going crazy, and then you've got bonds reacting in a different way than that which makes sense. The bond market is not following the script many had expected this summer, which would have seen interest rates rising on the back of a booming economy. Instead, yields on longer dated treasuries are falling, and that could be a warning on the economy. Strategists point to a number of reasons for the surprise drop in yields from technical issues to fears that inflation will force the Fed to move too fast to tighten policy, slowing the economy down as a result. So is the economy really going to ever rep be represented in the stock market or the bond market? Or is the bond market trying to send a warning? This, of course, we only know in the rearview mirror. But I want to ask you that. Put it in the comment section below. Let's talk about it. Yield spread highlights embrace of riskier debt. So now we're getting into this, okay? Investors scoop up lower rated debt, pushing yields closer to those of government bonds. This is very simple. I know that most of you know this, but the higher the risk you have in that debt, the more of a return. So if you're going to buy, let's just say, Greece's debt, it's going to yield higher than US debt because you're taking a higher risk, or at least that's usually the way things would be priced. But if you see what has happened over the years, if I just draw a very crude image here, if you look at the chart, you would see that, you know, over time, since the Euro sovereign debt crisis or the Euro viral contagion, the yields have been generally lower. You're getting less return on what I believe is just as risky debt today as it was back 2011 12 timeframe. And yet, this is where we are. I warned about in my book, specifically highlighting the dangers that we had, not just in Greece, but of course, Spain and Italy. Those are much bigger economies. And if you look at who owns the debt and start to realize this affects Germany, this affects others as well, you understand the bigger picture. The extra return investors demand to hold lower rated corporate bonds over ultra safe treasuries has fallen within striking distance of all time lows, a sign of investors appetite for riskier assets and the changing composition of bond indexes. So without getting into all of it, I'm just simply noting that on the corporate side, on the sovereign side, no matter where you look, if it's the country's debt or you look at the corporate debt, there's such high risk 
and yet you don't get any returns. So this is bringing investors into riskier and riskier things. And of course, that brings you over the cliff. Look at this. S&P 500 index, real dividend yield. And then you look at the bottom, that's the S&P 500 index. Anytime it goes to minus 2%, there always leads to a crisis at some point or at least a correction, okay? That's what happens here. And in this case here, we've gone far beyond that. Now, okay, okay, everything's different now because of 2020, I get it. I just found it interesting to say the least that it is, you know, for the majority of the time, it happens to be very accurate. Peter Lynch's rule of 20 valuation method this is the S&P 500 trailing PE plus the year-over-year -year CPI. Never seen anything like this before. Well, well beyond you know, what we saw during the time frame of the financial crisis and even further than looking at the year 2000. So we're beyond expensive based on any metric. Uh, you know, I, I knew that you knew that and even those who go you know, just super amounts of leverage. They know that too. They just believe that the Federal Reserve will be there to backstop any losses. And that kind of brings me to a point that I wasn't going to cover in this video, but I'll just touch on it really quickly. And if you find this interesting, I'm going to do an entire video about it, a rent GPS video about it. And that is, if you believe that the Federal Reserve actually wants to stop a crisis from happening instead of creating a crisis, then we're on a different page. Okay? Unusually narrow breadth. The lowest percentage of stocks above their 50-day moving average since 1999 when the S&P hits a record. That's crazy. This is unbelievable. Just take a look at that. It doesn't happen very often. Historically, this chart goes back 1990 all the way up into the present. And we're at a level right now. There's only been a couple moments back in the 90s where this happened. It shows you that level of concentration and the dependence on certain things continuing on forever. Look at this chart here from Goldman Sachs. Single stock options, average daily value, traded has topped $500 billion. Let me pull this up here. You can see it. Unbelievably, unbelievably. I believe that's the July statistics. And it just gives you an idea of how much speculation there is. Options, they're used to speculate. It's not necessarily somebody's going to buy that stock and hold it for 20 years, 10 years, whatever it might be. No, it's a speculative vehicle. On the right-hand side, options trading in the top 50 stock comprise 87% of all single stock notional traded. That's just showing you historically, this goes back 2006 up to the present. And quite frankly, you know, we hit this point back in what looks like 2013, 2012 or so. And didn't end up well during that period of time either. There are so many different reasons for all of this, but I think people need to be aware of what's happening today, the parallels in history, but that we've gone far beyond anything like that before. And this, quite frankly, is setting up a perfect storm. Number one, the consumption of debt can spiral out of control. And in fact, it already has. Number two, high-risk debt is returning very, very little today, and that is never a good sign. Number three, eventually nobody will be buying these debt products, and that means central banks will have to do that, and it will create an unbelievable problem like the world has never faced, because all countries are doing this at the same time. You can see what's going on with the CPI or the core PCE inflation rate. Any measure of inflation, do whatever you want, look it up, and you will see it's going higher and higher. Look at the PPI, the producer price index, intermediate materials, less food and energy, and just see that spike. You're going to see this, obviously, when you, know, you look at any of the data, but I just want to show you this 
give you some insight as to what's happening on the producer side because look the raw materials the supply chain all of these different problems have been creating this mess we know that looking at this however if you have higher prices as i've said many times before and doesn't take a genius to figure this out higher prices on things that people have to buy food if their energy is more expensive you know whatever it might be okay any of the things that are more expensive are going to simply take away from the disposable income of individuals consumer spending intentions their buying plans in the next six months homes appliances automobile all down do you think that has something to do with the fact that things are getting real expensive of course there's one other reason too but home buying intentions monthly change this chart goes back to the year 2000 and as you can see we've never seen a drop like this things are just out of control this is the u mitch bad buying conditions high prices so houses durables vehicles they're all up up and away essentially just showing you again prices have risen people don't want to buy stuff so all of this put together shows you that at least in the short term the economic effects of pulling the stimulus away if you see some of the states have started to reduce that or eliminate that and of course less disposable income less purchases slowing of the economy how do they resolve it you got to pump more in we'll see what happens and this is just comical this is outrageous japan and what they are doing shows you people use this as the model of success for quantitative easing and yet in my opinion this is the exact opposite this is the model of failure the boj the bank of japan to offer interest free loans under new climate facility central bank keeps main policy levers on change look look we're not going to change anything but we're going to give out free money take a look all right the new climate lending facility will allow the central bank to lend to commercial banks at zero interest rates for up to one year. The loans could be rolled over without a limit under the facility, which is scheduled to last through a fiscal 2030. So these banks here can take out money at 0% interest for nearly 10 years, at least, who knows? We'll see. And it's all for climate incentives but you as the individual if you're in a tight bind and you have to use that credit card because hey we all have tough times well too bad because you're going to end up paying 17 percent 24 percent sometimes even higher this is the way it works they help out their friends as an incentive the boj will exempt reserves held at the central bank from the negative interest rate equal to twice the amount that they lend out the facility is available only for loans and investment in climate projects in japan to be eligible for interest-free loans commercial banks must provide information about the loans that they make in accordance with international standards think about this for a second now the amount of businesses that are going to do this you get free money for a decade and what happens if you mess up you simply claim bankruptcy it's all over so you create a corporation even if you have an existing corporation you create a new corporation and say we are going to do this climate thing they give you a zero percent loan if it works out fantastic if it doesn't work out you shut the business down and that's all this is the end of the road people this is the end of the road this happens to be about Canada. I just want to highlight something. Home sales suffer a third decline from lofty heights in Canada. Uh, you know, they're just showing the activity. There, there's many reasons for this. I think people must be aware of what's happening here. Number one, prices are too high. Okay. You have inventory that clearly is lower than normal, but everybody's house is basically up for sale if the right price comes along. But at the same time, it's a very strange phenomenon which is going on in places around canada but you see it other places as well you have this you know you can go into the comments i have the proof in the comment section in, in um, prior years the reason why prices keep going up in canada 
The reason why it's not a bubble is because we have immigrants. Immigrants coming in, they're buying up those homes. That pushes the price up because there's always demand. Okay, this is a very silly thing because look at what had happened over the past year and a half. There's no new immigration. And yet, the prices are going up. Why? Oh, because people had to move out of the cities into these homes. Okay, so where did where did they, did they spring up out of the ground? Where did these people go? Where did they come from? Why aren't there just you know more vacancies now? The numbers don't make sense. All of this is driven by speculation. It's all because of the Fed. It's all because of the Bank of Canada. It's because of the Bank of Japan and the biz and all of these supranational entities. Most people just simply can't make that connection. And that's unfortunate. Listen, if you want to get the real deal, you want to know the information, this platform here, obviously, they're cutting people off. You know that if you've been on this for a while, there's been multiple purges getting rid of people. If you want to be able to get this information, you got to get it on my email list because I'm going to send you the video directly to you. There are over 5,000 people on this list right now. And I want to thank each and every one of you who has joined up. It's totally free, of course. It's available at themoneygps.com. Listen, if you haven't already, hit that thumbs up button. You support me when you do. I really do appreciate that. I'm on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn. And I'm giving out details that I don't give on the channel. So you got to get on there, whatever your platform is get on there at the money GPS. And if you haven't seen this video already, you want to check it out, click it and I'll see you there.